Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Your stars align. This is Carmina, astrologer with Vedic principles and reader with the cards of truth. And today let me welcome again Vedic astrologer Levi Kosan. Welcome. Hi Carmina, how are you? Good, good. I'm glad to have you back. Um, it's great to be on your channel. Thank you. Today, Hello. this morning actually, uh, I was receiving some photos from a friend of mine who lives in London and she was showing me that the streets are full of flowers because of the royal wedding. And I didn't know right. anything about, you know, this person getting married like Meghan. And, me neither, uh, me neither actually. I was yeah. not aware. Mm -hmm. So I thought that today we would make a video looking at uh, Meghan Merkel's chart to see how um, her career factors, her success factors, her marriage factors align. So, yeah, I think uh, even if, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, yes, I mean, we don't know her, we, right? You don't know her, I don't know her, not really. Um, but um, I think it would be interesting to see how the Jamini stuff plays out because if you're becoming royal, then something must be going on in your horoscope, right, to um, create that. So um, <clears throat> it's interesting, interesting to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we will be looking at some Jamini principles. We'll be looking at Kendra Konaraj Yogas, Brihat Parashara Yogas. And we'll also be looking at the dashas, at Vimshotri dasha, Tarar Kamsha dasha, to see how the factors line up. Mm -hmm. um, and before we get started, I wanted to mention that Levi and I did some classes in the past about astrology of wealth, astrology of relationships, Lajita Diavashtas. The recordings are available for purchase on my website, yourstarsaligncom slash courses. And Levi also has a website. Yes, it's levicuzen.com. It's L-E-V-I-C-O-S-I-J-N.com. Wonderful. I'm going to post a link down below. And you're mm -hmm. going to make a YouTube channel as well, right? Yes, it's coming soon. It's coming. I'm working on it. Yeah. Wonderful. We need more astrology. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, even if you're not Thank really you. interested in uh, Megan. Merkel, you'll be interested to uh, learn with us about the, the career factors and all these success forming yokas. So let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. can, can you see my screen? Yes, perfectly fine. Okay, so um, the birth date and time is taken from astro.com. Uh, they say it's from the birth certificate in hand, so it must be pretty accurate. Right. And, um, right off the bat, we see... So let's, let's give you a bit of background information about this person, because I looked on Wikipedia today <laughs> to mm -hmm. see a few things about her. <clears throat> so in 2018, she was called by Time magazine... Uh, one of the uh, 100 most influential people in the world. So oh. that is something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She, <clears throat> she is best known as an actress, uh, but she only became famous after 2011, I think. And um, her best known uh, role as an actress is that of a lawyer in a, a TV drama called Suits. So she played uh, the part of a lawyer for seven years. Uh, she was also involved with charity organization from um, her early um, like teen years. And she's an ambassador for the UN. She's a spokesperson for a charity organization for uh, gender equality and uh, non-slavery. Uh -huh. And yes, she she just married today the Prince Harry. <laughs> so, All right. And her parents were divorced. I think uh, we're we're gonna see that as well. They were divorced when she was six. Mm -hmm. so, um, if, can can you yeah. maybe pull up the the Navamsha also? Of course. Like a Navamsha. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Yeah, we're going to be switching charts. Mm. So this is a South Indian layout for those of you who are not used to it. So we look at the signs in a clockwise 
order at the house as you can see the house cusps numbers and this double line here is the ascendant mm -hmm. <clears throat> so um, let's start by looking at her ascendant at her soul planet um, we can see she has this debilitated planet Mars in Cancer on the ascendant and she has another debilitated planet here, Venus in Virgo in the third house. So at first glance, for somebody who's not a really experienced astrologer, they would say, okay, this person is not going to be successful because they have like two debilitated planets. But, <laughs> you know, there is this thing called Nietzsche Banga Raj Yogas. And Levi, can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, well, <clears throat> it seems that she has two debilitated planets, right? She has Venus and Mars. So, yes, I think, <clears throat> so Venus and Mars are going to create some problems in a horoscope for sure. I mean, Mars and the Ascendant can, you know, create some um, health problems. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but I think, yeah, we if we analyze the Nietzsche Banga, so it means that... Um, Planets that are part of the Nietzsche Banga Raja Yoga, right, are going to be power players in the horoscope, you know, depending on their avastas and their strength, right? But um, it seems to be in her horoscope that the Lord of Mars, um, which is the moon, is on an angle from the ascendant. So that is already, um, excuse me, and the moon, it is the moon, right? So. That would be like a moon forming a Nietzsche Banga Raja Yoga. Mm -hmm. Then the other condition is that the planet that in which the debilitated planets, um, and so the debilitated planets exaltation sign, the Lord of that, right, which is Saturn, yes. is also in an angle from the moon and the ascendant, it seems. Right? Yes. And then... The moon, which is the lord of the debilitated planet's exaltation, Rashi, which is Venus, is not in an angle from the moon or the ascendant. So, but she has... Um, nice cancellations. Yes, from Saturn and moon for um, Mars. So, And also, uh, mm -hmm. moon and Saturn are on an angle from each other. So the debilitation lord and... Yes. And so she has three um, of the four conditions... Um, met for you know um, taking care of that problem right which Mars can create um, so yeah it's so amazing her the power in her horoscope I mean the Nietzsche Banga Yogas um, yeah, let, let's take it step by step right yes. this house is incredible this fourth house actually Yes, I, I wanted to mention that, you know, like with Nietzsche Banga Raj Yogas, um, it's, it doesn't work as a cancellation, so she's going to still have some issues with Mars on the Ascendant being debilitated and also with Venus being debilitated, but uh, the planets that form the, uh, you know, the Nietzsche Banga Raj Yogas will help overcome, will help her work harder and somehow, um, I don't know, become a greater person because of the hard work to get mm -hmm. away from the pain of the Nichabanga, <laughs> of the debilitated planets. Yes. Also, the well, it's not a cancellation of debilitation yes. here. Mm -hmm. But Mars is quite is doing better in Navamsha, which is always important. And in Sashtyamsha here, um, it's also um, better. So, yeah, it would create some problems, maybe um, in respect to the father or something. You mm -hmm. know, something about, I don't know if you know uh, stuff about that, but... Um, it no, could have I some implications. Her parents were divorced when she was six, but I don't know, like, about her relationship with her. Parents. Yes, so Mars is debilitated, the 10th Lord. Um, could also, in Jamie, it's of course also the mother, in the sign of the mother. The sun, as an, as an indicator of father, is conjunct Rahu there, which is also, also conjunct the 12th cusp. There, so there could be some affliction to, um, I don't know, her. Um, Growing up, because Rahu in the second house is always, it can inflict the, um, you know, early environment, right? So the yeah. early family life. So she was, her parents were divorced, right? Yes, when she was six years old. So mm -hmm. let's see what her dasha was. I guess it six was years, I was like uh, 80, dasha, I think. 88 or 80, yeah. Or yeah 87. Mars, Mars, Saturn or Mars, Jupiter. So it was a Mars dasha, like you mm -hmm. said, and it's debilitated. Mm hmm maybe yeah yeah okay so 
Mars is um, doing that. Then Venus, we can also look at Venus and the Nichabanga on Venus. Um, because it's her, Makarika, it's her self planet. It's in the sign of Virgo. She was an actress, so that, that take care, takes care of that, right? Um, yes, exactly. In the third house, ruled by Mercury. So Mercury becomes is the actress. Um, is also with the sun, which is a self factor. Mm -hmm. And Rahu. Um, so what is happening? So the Lord of Venus is Mercury. So it's, it's not in an angle to the moon or the ascendant. Venus is exaltation Lord. It's Jupiter is also not in an angle to the ascendant or the moon. Jupiter is, excuse me. It's in an angle from me. So Jupiter is, and she's running Jupiter Dasha right now. Yes, so so Jupiter is also um, part of uh, Nichabanga Raja Yoga. Which is also, we, again, it's just happening in this fourth house, which we will explain a little later on, right? So, yes, yes that would only add up to the, the power of that um, um, fourth house and the Jupiter Dasha. She's running Jupiter K2 right now, right? Yes, exactly. And it's interesting to say that, um, so she became an actress like earlier on, um, but she only had her important role in 2011 when she started her Jupiter Dasha. So in Rahu Dasha, she was only having small roles and she was supporting herself by occasional modeling or she worked also as a calligrapher, which is very interesting because it's a third house of occupation, right? It's like mm -hmm. uh, more artistic kind of writing and it makes sense with Venus in the third house. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that she only... And, are so interesting that her first ever role was that of a nurse and Venus is also the nurse. <laughs> yes. And it was in Jupiter that she had her like success. Yes. Her breakthrough. So, yes. So, and that would be like the Nichibanga plan, you know, taking care of that, right? Yes. Venus in the sign. Yes. And um, also since we mentioned her careers, I think she also has the lawyer combination because the people in the universal consciousness, they know her as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I think that is, uh, you know, her um, Atma Karaka Lord is Mercury and Mercury is the lawyer. It's with the sun, which is another self factor. Uh -huh. It's aspected by the ninth Lord Jupiter for the law. And it's uh, uh, Jupiter also happens to be the sixth Lord for litigation. So sixth and ninth Lord Jupiter are aspecting Mercury and the sun, which is an another self factor. So... I think it's also plays out in the Shastyamsha. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And also the acting, it plays out well. So it's good. Like the first, seventh, third, mm -hmm. important. And it's all playing out there as well. So and it's it also, good, good birth time. And also interesting that she got married in 2011. She was married before. So, in 2011? Yes, when her Jupiter yes. Dasha came, you see here that Jupiter is with her Dara Karaka, the moon, mm -hmm. yes. seventh Lord Saturn, and Jupiter is also a natural Karaka for the spouse in a woman's chart. It's uh, the ninth Lord of marriage. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so like a, a big agenda for Jupiter for marriage. Yes, and Jupiter is very nicely um, manifest. Now, if we talk about the ninth Lord in the fourth in the angle mm -hmm. with the first Lord, with the, um, it's associative eighth Lord for mm -hmm. a cancer Lagna mm -hmm. and aspected by the fifth and 10th, the yoga Karaka. <laughs> so that's like a nice PowerPoint here. So we, we have, we have these things already playing out, right? The Dichabanga and then this, um, Raja, well, Kendra Kuna Raja Yoga. Yes. For cancer ascendant. I wanted mm -hmm. to actually read like uh, Parashara's Bhava Lords for Cancer Lagna. Yes, please do. <laughs> Venus and Mercury are evil. Mars, Jupiter, and the Moon are auspicious. A full yoga karaka is Mars causing fortune. A killer is Saturn, and the Sun from association gives effects. Thus, the mm -hmm. results caused by Cancer Lagna stated by the wise. Yeah, it's so clear yeah it's I'm a powerful the yoga screen just in case the yoga judgment screen so what is jupiter doing i uh, can't really see it okay, here jupiter has 3.6 positive points nice that's that's good it's positive 
Moon is also auspicious. Moon has 3.5 versus 0 0.9. Mm -hmm. And Saturn, I know Saturn is a Maraka Lord and a Dushtana Lord, but he, he's not considered as an evil Lord, so he's not a yoga breaker. Yes. It's an associative Lord, yes. Exactly. And also, Pula the um, Lajitaria Vastas. Yes. So, can you see it? What is Jupiter? Yes. Uh, Jupiter is lighted by the Sun, by the Moon, by Mars. Mm -hmm. He's starved by Saturn and Venus and a bit yeah. by Mercury. But I think overall... She has good support, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's the ninth or in the fourth. We have this yoga going on. Also, the, pada, the Lagna Pada is in the fourth house. So that makes her a Sri Mantaha. Like she has like this, um, wow, like moon, Jupiter. Fourth house, like really. So, so you know, uh, uh, Sri Manta is when um, Jupiter, the moon or an exalted, or Venus or an exalted planet um, are in the Lagna Pada, right? Yes. So she has three. She has Jupiter, moon, and an exalted planet. That's um, Yes, so this fourth good. house is really pivotal for her development because she has these Nichabanga planets. She has mm -hmm. the yoga karakas. She has the Sri Manta. <laughs> so yes. It's, it's also the Lagna Pada and the Sapant Pada are also in angles from each other. Yes, another combina Jaimini combinations for success. Mm -hmm. so, and can you just pull up her Yogada table stuff? Yes. What is happening there? One second. Mm -hmm. Now she's running Jupiter K2. So K2 has like this um, very good, <laughs> she ha it has a, a three point uh, yoga and two two point yogas and Jupiter has one. So it's K2 that is uh, also adding to this. And There's K2 is ruled by Saturn, which is her seventh Lord and also yoga Karaka associative there. So her husband, you know, seventh Lord, husband and eighth Lord uh, combined like shared resources. So she won the lottery of the husband. <laughs> I think she did. Can you, because you're saying lottery, can you just pull up her um, Kave Damsha chart, like D40 chart? Yes. For auspicious events and see what Jupiter Ketu is doing there. And Jupiter is nice in Sagittarius here. In its own sign in the seventh house. Mm -hmm. So it has that connotation and k2 is in the first and with the seventh cusp and the eleventh cusp of gains and the first cusp mm -hmm. k2's lord is mercury in scorpio mm, it's in a friend sign venus is yeah. exalted here mm -hmm. so mercury is can you just um you know press the like the middle of the d4 ch the chart so we yes. can so what these plans just curious uh, uh, the oh you see it yeah okay so k2 has a lot of manifesting influence mm -hmm. of a you know jupiter it has an exalted venus aspecting as well um the fourth cusp is the moon um and then what is mercury exalted doing Mars. so she has two exalted <laughs> planets <laughs> Yes, she has some separation, but Mercury is like in a Yuba in an adult state, it's in a friend's sign. It's in a sixth, so, but yeah, I think um, it would be considered an auspicious event. Yes. Probably it's also a very a stressful time for her at the same time. I mean, of you course. can imagine, right, if this kind of thing happens. Yes, her privacy, she will have to let go of it. She had to delete all her social media accounts in January this year. Mm -hmm. Her life will not be completely hers anymore because you know Saturn is still Saturn there even though it's exalted but if you, you see her uh, Kave Damsha chart it's quite nice right to exalted planets uh, the worst is in the Saturn in a neutral dignity so yeah that would um, that makes sense inspiration from friends yeah. and also from the fourth house right because she had to leave her she's born in the US she had to she's moved to the UK so so we can check that out um, we can check. So we have the seventh lord. So the Lagna Lord Moon is with the seventh lord. It's also aspected by Rahu. And the Moon is the ascendant lord, which relates to Cancer, which is also foreign affairs. And then we could also look at it in the um, D4 chart. Yes. To so just see the potential. I mean, it's happened, so we, we should see it, right? 
Oh, wait. I'm going to move away from the yoga screen. Mm -hmm. Before we go to the D4 chart, I wanted to mm -hmm. talk a bit more about career because it's interesting. You know, her mother is a social worker and a yoga instructor. And that can also be seen from the chart because her... Um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Matru Karaka? Yes, her Matru Karaka, her Gemini temporary Karaka for the mother is Jupiter. And it's conveniently placed in the fourth house, which is also an indication for the mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, the social worker is indicated by Jupiter being with Saturn and Moon because mm -hmm. it's working with more people in need, which are Saturn. Yes. So, And also the yoga instructor profession, you can see that the Lord of the fourth Venus is in the third. So it's like a technical thing. Mm -hmm. And also Jupiter um, is here in Libra. That's good for spirituality. And it's aspected by third Lord Mercury for uh, exercise. And it's also with the Lagna Lord that involves the body. And also Jupiter is the ninth uh, cusp Lord for philosophy again and teaching. And mm. Mars is influenced I mean, Mars is in the first for the body, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Mars's Lord is with the, um, the ninth Lord for, again, for teaching. And it's aspecting by, it's aspected by the third Lord. So you can see the professions of her mother from her chart. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Also, I think... Um, is she, she, she must be um, like the ninth lord in Jupiter is quite... Is she in charity? She probably is, right? Yes. She, like, when she was 11, um, she was... I mean, she's always been very involved with uh, public things. She, when she was only 11, she had a campaign to take off the air uh, an ad on national television because she thought it was sexist. And she was featured on TV for that because she had this successful campaign. And mm -hmm. then during her teenage years, she got involved with several charity organizations. And now she's even a spokesperson for charity organizations for the youth, for gender equality, and for um, the ab abolition of slavery. You know, slavery is Saturn. Mm -hmm. and, and also an ambassador is Venus, right? Yes, and ambassador. she also worked, she worked as an intern for the embassy of the U.S. in Argentina. So yes, Venus the ambassador. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, like, uh, Jaimini careers can be really seen very clearly in her chart. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that she was doing this, these things before she started dating Prince Harry in 2016. So she didn't do it for the show. This is just who she is. So she is really like a charitable person. And mm -hmm. really, uh, she cares about other people's pain because, you know, people with Saturn Moon can relate to the misery and the pain of other people. And they want to help, especially with Jupiter delighting here. That's a tight conjunction also. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, uh, yeah, she had some issues with her mother, probably, like, in her childhood. Yes. Well, she's running Jupiter Ketu right now, so marriage is indicated as the ninth lord in a Rashi chart. And then <clears throat> also, like, her sh shared uh, Ketu, his lord is exalted. It has a lot of manifesting influence from Jupiter and Mercury. It's a Mulatricona sun aspecting as well, and it's a waxing moon. So it looks really good. And then also Jupiter is aspecting her eight cusp, like a serious transformation, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> and then also shared resources, of course. Yeah. Uh, so, so I'm going to mention some, something, uh, a coincidence, but I think it's very funny and interesting. You know, the fourth is the mother, but it's also fortune. Mm -hmm. um, her mother lives and she was born in this uh, city in California that is called Windsor. And right now she's part of Windsor dynasty. <laughs> wow. Isn't that interesting? It's a nice, nice synchronicity, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's look at her um, Hora chart at her um, Chaturthamsha, right? To look at her fortune capacity. I really like, um, you know, these um, these rules that 
like Nicha Bangaraj Yogas, and also there's this rule in uh, the um, Tarar in the Tarar Kamsha Hora. That's uh, some debilitated planets be able to give the status of Srimantaha, so a wealthy, glorious person. Mm -hmm. Like we're going to see here. The first Dasha? Yes. So we looked at the first Dasha in the Tarar Kamsha Dasha, which is a Dasha which shows like wealth and getting ahead in life. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is Venus. And then we look at Venus in the Hora, we see it's debilitated, so she's a Srimanta. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. What other things you can can you see? You want to see uh, look at the Hora? Yes. Yes. So the important planet for the Hora um, is the moon. Mm -hmm. Right? So we can look at what moon is doing. You can, maybe you can push the, the middle of the Hora there. Uh, I'm just going to bring the Hora chart here mm -hmm. just to see it better and... Yeah, so what is Moon doing? Moon is in a friend sign here with delighted by Jupiter and starved by Saturn. It's a separating influence, yes. yes. Mercury is also aspecting. Manifesting. Moon. Yeah, so then we have um, the second cusp to examine, which is an exalted Saturn, which is also um, nicely manifested by Jupiter and Mercury again. It has some Rahu Sun stuff, but it, you know, it's going to play out. And it's also the exalted Saturn is at Rashi aspecting its own cusp there. There's also a debilitated Mars um, aspecting, which could create some problems. But that's like a really nice protection of the second house cusp. So this lady would definitely be um, resourceful, right? And mm -hmm. second from the moon <clears throat> has an exalted Mars Rashi aspecting its own um, house, its own sign there. Um, then we have this, the third cusp is Jupiter. And Jupiter is also in an adult state, so it has manifesting influence, and then it also has some separating influence. Yeah, we, can, we can see that um, the horror chart is definitely... Also, let's look at the debilitated planets as well. Do we have the same thing going on? So... Yes, because the same plants, it's just the ascendant changed here, but it's also happening on an angle, right? Mm -hmm. So Mars is, and then Venus as the same. So we have these Nietzsche Bhanga Raja Yogas um, applying in all the Vargas, right? So, um, and this is also applying here. So Jupiter is part of that. So um, definitely no problem with res being resourceful. And then look at her, what, let, what is the yeah, Jupiter K2 Dasha? That would be like, you know, K2's Lord exalted. That's, you know. Not. And it's also interesting that in the Tarar Kamsha, she's running Sagittarius Gemini now. Mm -hmm. Sagittarius is with the 12th cusp of foreign places. Gemini, where is Gemini? Here. So with the 6th cusp. 6th hmm, cusp. Um, she's running it now, Sagittarius Gemini. She's going to start Sagittarius Cancer in June. Mm -hmm. so maybe... <laughs> Who knows? Maybe can we look at the D4 chart? What is Mercury doing here? Mercury um, is <clears throat> with just, Rahu. Just push it, yeah. I'm just going to put it up here. Right. You have to push the mid, like in the middle of the, I yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, you have it, yeah. Okay, like this. It's good. Um, so Mercury, what is Mercury here? It's a neutral dignity. She has an exalted Saturn here. Mm -hmm. Which rules the fourth house cusp, which is important and has all this manifesting influence as well. Then the fourth from the fourth is the seventh, which also has Jupiter and an exalted Saturn. So here we can see some wealth potential. Now we're not going to go through all the yogas, right? Like the Anapa, Sunapa, Duradara, right? Mm, I mean, we can. But the, yeah, we could, we could. Um, but you know, I think it's important, you know, that. Um, we looked at the D40 chart because that's the fortune and misfortune. So that's like really fine tuning it because not everybody that was born on that day with that ascendant is going to have what she has. 
So mm-hmm. I think in the higher Vargas, it's shown like what differentiates her from other people that were born that day, like in the D40, D60. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're looking at potential, right? So we're not really deeply going into it, but uh, yeah, when you start looking, you start to you know things, bec- you know, come flying at you, right? So exactly. But we see that you know the fourth cusp has an exalted Saturn. It has Jupiter and Mercury onto it as well. You know, giving a good solid. It's also conjuncting the seventh cusp, which these are the two important points here. Then Mercury and the fourth from Mercury has the Sun. The sun is also in a great friend sign. It's also in an adult state. So it's definitely able, you know, capable of manifesting. Mm-hmm. And so because she's running Jupiter K2, and so in both the Hora and the Chatur Tamsha chart and the Rashi chart, it's clear that um, she's taking off, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. I was curious to look at her Vada Samsha chart to, say, to see her ancestral influences, like what's happening mm-hmm. there. She has Mars and Jupiter in their own sign. I mean, it's really good. The worst planet is Saturn in an enemy sign. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thinking maybe we can look at her transits of the day, like it, because she's she got married, right? So I wanted be... to to say about like cards of truth wise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when she met Prince Harry. So you can see here that her seventh cusp card is a three of spades. So when she met Prince Harry in June 2016, she was running a three of spades. So she was running her um, seventh cusp card, which is a is a good way to to see when you're gonna meet somebody significant. And we we also see that she came right after a breakup. I mean, she met him after a breakup, so that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So on the day that she got married, I'm not going to open it. I'm just going to say she's running like a... Oh, well, you can open it if you want, you know. Okay. Just for people to see, it's, it's interesting. Yes. So, okay, so this year... Let me move this a bit. So now she's 36. She's running, when she got married now, she's running a six of spades on the Venus card. So six is the number of Venus, so it resonates with the Venusian energy, but it's more like for self-development. Like she, <clears throat> like this wedding is something that, uh, some expression of her maturity, of her physical and psychological maturity. And uh-huh. you also see like Jupiter here manifesting, and Jupiter is also the husband. And it's going to have an effect on the 11th, cusp of goals like long-term goals and the fourth cusp of happiness <laughs> and, and recognition right the 11th <laughs> exactly mm-hmm. so let me look at the day uh, when she got married so, and she she was married twice once in 2011 and I, as i was saying and this is her second wedding Her first wedding was exactly after she started Jupiter Dasha. So she got married in Jupiter Jupiter. She got divorced in Jupiter Saturn. And now she met Prince Harry in Jupiter Mercury and she got married uh, in Jupiter Ketu, right? Yes. Um, Let's see. So her spouse planet is the moon. Let's see. Yes. Well, she is running a six of heart, which is like the wedding card because it's the most fulfillment you can get with love. This the six of hearts is called like a, a marriage card uh-huh. in the card system, so it fits. And in the week progression, yes. Uh, she was running, I'm looking at the day of 18th because her time zone is different to the time zone she is now. So it fits to the 18th. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, she has this jack of hearts and jack of hearts is like the prince. <laughs> because the queens are the queens, the kings are the kings and the jacks are like like she married uh-huh. the prince. And um, yeah, the seventh lord is here, Saturn. And, you know, the Jack of Hearts is also um, a fixed card, so it shows a long-term change. You can see that 
Her ecliptic card of the week is a two of hearts, which is like a couple card. She also is running a six of hearts, which is again the marriage card. So mm -hmm. I think you can see it from here. Okay, now let's look at what we did we say we were looking at now? Maybe we can do like the trigger transits okay, the trigger. kind of confirm it. It's good to see the cards and then also the trigger transit. But maybe I should share my screen yes, for that. Go ahead. I think it's going to be more practical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just one sec. Okay. Okay, so I have this here. So um, let's pull up the transits animated screen. It must line up, right? She got married. The time is. I think I changed her. Mm -hmm. um, the exact time when they were declared husband and wife was uh, 12 39 p.m. <laughs> 12 39, but yes. it's going to be like a transit, it can be a day before, yes, day after. Of like, so I look at I changed the birth time a little bit. I'm going to pull up the Navamsha, yes, and also the Shastiamsha, and then also make it an auspicious event. And then the Akshavadamsha is for purpose, right? So, yes. anchor. It's, it's the person. Uh, an echo of the Navamsha. Mm -hmm. It's a, a ninth um, divisional. So, what happens here? That's a lot of things going on, right? So, let's look at her Acharakaraka. She's in an Atmakaraka Venus. Her moon is Dharakaraka. Then her mm, ascendant is the moon. Well, the moon is here on the ascendant. And um, her ninth lord is Jupiter, her seventh lord is Saturn. So we have to make some connections, right? So I think um, let's go back a couple of hours. Like, um, what is it? She got married today, right? So yes. let's start early. What was happening? Okay, so hmm. Well, we have the <clears throat> the moon, which is the ascendant lord, mm, trining. Um, the ninth cusp lord, Jupiter, and of course, Jupiter is also the karaka for the husband, right? Now, see, the moon is not really full. You know, it's actually and she's it's growing, so that would be nice. But we have to avoid like. Um, new moons and this kind of thing i mean yes. we can so we we have to look at for some other trigger transit between you know the self factor and some marriage relating factor i just wanted to say it's nice that she she got married when the moon was in cancer and venus was in gemini and uh jupiter in scorpio so good natural. yes that would be like part more you know that would be different than when when moon would be in the you know first degrees of um scorpio or something like that <laughs> you know but it's good it's in its own sign also venus is going to enter there so mm -hmm. yeah but it is training i mean it is um you know connecting right so yes um, but but preferably we need some other um it's also the darakaraka right which is yes, um, the moon is the darakaraka exactly yes. So um, that's look a little bit further because I didn't really see a lot um, there. So it was nine. So it's interesting, like you were saying, that the the fourth house that uh, is so emphasized in her chart, and these planets, the Moon and Jupiter, that make her a Sri Mantaha, and the Moon is her Darakaraka, and Jupiter is the natural Darakaraka. So. She kind of, I mean, she was already like well known because she was an actress. So her Saturn exalted made her, but now with like, because of her spouse, she became even more famous and like she can impact even more people. Yes, that's definitely indicated. Like the Rashi chart shows like an incredible um, Sri Mantaha level, right? Exactly. <laughs> and even, even the Tarot Kamsha. <laughs> so I think if we do the other Jaimini Raja Yoga stuff, that it would pile up and pile up, right? But it, yes. it has to be, right? It has to play out. Oh, and Saturn, I forgot it was the seventh Lord. So all three spouse factors. Yes. Sri <laughs> Mantaha. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, you, here you see the transit, like a yes. trigger transit of the Karaka, and it's which is also the um, like the Karaka of marriage. Venus yes. is Rashi aspecting the sun, which mm -hmm. is a natural indicator of self. And then, of course, um, Venus is um, the Atma Karaka. So, 
Um, so we have that going on in a Rashi chart. So there is a tr trigger transit going on in a Rashi chart, which relates to marriage. Okay. Yes. Um, we also see that the seventh Lord is, you know, Graha aspecting the moon. It's like a blur of blue here, but this is his moon. Yes. And uh, Jupiter and Saturn. So, <laughs> yeah, so Jupiter is again. Um, Involved. I mean, the moon is the, the ascendant Lord, right? So. Um, so let's look at some other divisional charts. So we have to have um, Navamsha involved, of course. We're going to pull it in. So here we have Saturn as a first lord. And so here the Saturn is connected to um, the ascendant lord, for example, and also the ninth lord, Jupiter. So we have the Navamsha involved as well. See? Yes. But you can also say that the ninth lord, Mars, is strongly connected to the nodes because the nodes have to be involved when such an event happens, right? So, yeah. And she's running um, Jupiter K2 now. And she's running Jupiter K2. And um, what is it? I think Moon, was, Moon is like making this transit. It's going to go over all these points as just a little, a little later on. Mm -hmm. So we have Navamsha involved. That's the most important thing. Then in the Shastyamsha, because this one needs to be involved as well, we have the moon. Moon is here making this movement. It was, you know, trining the ninth lord here. But Venus is the ninth cusp lord in the Shastyamsha, which is Rashi aspecting um, the natural indicator of self, which is the sun. So we have the Shastyamsha involved as well. Kavidamsha, moon is important. It's also ruling the fourth cusp. So moon is doing the same dance here. Um, but also Mercury is the first lord of the Kavidamsha. So let's look a little further what the moon is doing. Okay, here you see it already. Like Mercury um, and the Atmakaraka <clears throat> are connecting, which is connecting this... Um, Akshavidam, oh, excuse me, Kavidamsha chart to the Rashi chart as well. Then we have, um, yes, that does it, right? Mm -hmm. You also see that the south node is connecting to these points. So Kavidamsha is involved, and then we have Mars as the first lord. The ninth cusp is important in the Akshavidamsha chart or the ascendant, which is more, but preferably the nine cusp lord or the sun. And sun is, of course, involved um, because it's connected to Yamakaraka. Hated marriage. <laughs> mm -hmm. And here also you see Mars connected to um, the ascendant lord. Right? Yes. And the she notes involved. Mm -hmm. Kito in Aquarius, I think in the eighth. So she comes from a past life background, you know, of, uh, you know, resources uh, benefiting from the spouse's resources. So maybe this is like something echoing from a past life. <laughs> Merit or oh, something. Because mm -hmm. okay, the Lord is exalted. So. Definitely. Yes. And in the fourth, it's a, it's a really part, as you go back to the, main screen so the trigger transits is definitely there yes yes it's there in the rashi in the navamsha in the shastyamsha so it's all covered mm -hmm. yes <clears throat> so is there anything else you want to talk about do you want to look at some yogas some shuba ashuba some wealth yogas from the moon or something to see if um we can <clears throat> have like um let me pull up something Yes. Am I still sharing my screen here? Yes. Yes. I have this um, document. I hope it's still in here. I'm not sure. It's not seen, but you can read it. Oh, yes. It you see it? No. But oh, you can I'll, I'll share it. Yeah. Okay. So let me just share here. Um, She has a really good chart. You see it now? Yes. Yeah, okay. And I would have to probably make it a little smaller. Yes. So, so let's look at some core yogas. Right, so what's happening in her chart? Okay, 
<clears throat> Let's go up here. Yeah, so she has moon in an angle, you know, Jupiter in an angle from the moon, which is the Kajikasari yoga. That's happening. And Jupiter was, you know, has a decent yoga strength there. Mm -hmm. um, then. And so does the moon. And so does the moon. And they're both yoga karakas. And she's running Jupiter Dasha. So many things lining up for her at the same time. I think that's yes. what makes one really successful because everybody has a couple of yogas running, but when like four, five, six, the Jaimini and Parashara yogas line up, like really, mm -hmm. you're going to get married to a prince. <laughs> My um, cursor is going crazy here, so bear with me. Yes. Um, so conch shell yoga, I saw that something was there. Yeah, it's my cursor. It's it's because of this is a Mac computer, so it's fine. So and something sometimes it goes a little crazy. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I should ch just shut it down and open it again. So we're gonna have to wait for that. Yes. Okay. So um, Kajikasari Yoga and the Kanchal Yoga is also there, <clears throat> which is the fifth and the sixth lords. Um, in mutual angles and the Lagna Lord strong, right? Yes. Um, so that will also give wealth. These these um, yogas definitely, um, you know, have a bearing on wealth. She has the Chandra Moon Yoga, which is um, the tenth Lord <clears throat> in an angle triangle second from the Moon. Mars and what is going on? She has Mercury Sun Yoga going on. Yes, yeah. would, would make her skillful. Yes, and the Rahu is also there. So always Rahu with the sun. Individuals are very charismatic and magnetic. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's all, yes, in happening in the sign of the king, right? Mm -hmm. So Mulatrikuna sun also. And then we have um, some, I think that's about it it's for you. It's interesting yogas. because... But uh, I think the most... Mm -hmm, her Rahu is in Leo, so she's working, she's developing her royal side. <laughs> yes, definitely. And also, I think, and, and the sun is in Mulatikona sign. And there's, you know, manifesting influence here. Yes. And um, Jupiter also manifesting. Which is the worst. Wow. I think the most important thing is the, you know, Kendra Kuna Raja Yoga here in the fourth, yes. and then the whole Jaimini. Shrimanda. And stuff is really um, showing it, right? Yeah. yeah, I think we covered this chart pretty well. So I think uh, you have an idea of the mm -hmm. factors that contributed to this person becoming a princess, winning the husband lottery. <laughs> As, yes, and also if you know this, it would it was a very interesting thing to do because we you didn't really know this person mm -hmm. i didn't either and then so we know we knew that these things had to line up you know and exactly. they do so the i think that's um that's nice it's a it's a good confirmation that uh jaimini career factors work and the kendra konaraj yoga's work as mm -hmm. well. for sure and the dashas are running yes mm -hmm. so i'm gonna yeah, can you please stop sharing the screen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so now we are going to say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed and you learned something from this video. Again, check out Levi's website, levicosen.com. I'm going to post it in the link below. And also check out my website, yourstarsalign.com. And uh, watch out for the classes that we will be teaching again soon. Mm hmm uh, thank you, Levi, for joining us again. Thank you very much, Carmina, for having me on your channel. It's always very nice. I'm looking forward to our next class. Thank you. And yeah. I'm looking forward to you having your own channel. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So, thank see you, guys. Goodbye.